Amid the fourth global coral bleaching event, some corals in the shallow waters and intertidal zones of Singapore are turning pale and white. About 20% of corals off Kusu Island were showing signs of stress or partial bleaching as at May 17. Said Dr. Yoni Tanzel, Facility Director of the St. John's Island National Marine Laboratory SGINML. This slight bleaching is also seen at the Sisters Islands, which are part of Singapore's only marine park. The majority of Singapore's corals are found no deeper than 6 m underwater, and this covers the intertidal zones and shallow waters. The corals in deeper waters, where reef cover and diversity are lower, are faring okay for now. Said Dr. Karen Tan, Director of the National Parks, Boards and Parks, National Biodiversity Centre. The agency, alongside marine enthusiasts and divers, has been keeping a closer watch on the health of the reefs amid higher sea surface temperatures. Efforts include taking note of the level of bleaching while diving. In recent weeks, sea surface temperatures here have surpassed 31 degrees Celsius, with a peak of 31.7 degrees Celsius on May 18. According to Stimel's Marine Environment Sensing Network, the highest average monthly temperature is 30.5 degrees Celsius. In 2010 and 2016, the El Nino climate phenomenon, which causes sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific to heat up and elevate global temperatures, was reaching its tail end. The current El Nino cycle is expected to taper off in the middle of 2024. But El Nino is likely to still make its presence felt here in the form of higher than usual temperatures in the months ahead. As heat takes time to transfer from the sea surface to the atmosphere, weather experts had told the Straits Times previously. Dr. Tanzel said, We are now entering our seventh week of higher than usual temperatures. The next one to two weeks are crucial. If sea surface temperatures don't go up further, or, better yet, cool, then we have some hope our corals will be out of danger. Corals get their vibrant colors from microscopic algae that live in their tissues. When they get stress from rising sea temperatures, the corals will expel the algae and turn ashen white. Most of Singapore's intact coral reefs are found in the southern islands. Reefs act as the underwater rainforest, sustaining life. They serve as habitat for more than 100 species of reef fish, about 200 species of sea sponges, and rare and endangered seahorses and clams, among other creatures. In mid-April, the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA confirmed that the world's fourth global bleaching event was underway. On May 16, the NOAA warned that the massive coral bleaching episode is expanding and deepening in reefs around the globe. Amid record ocean temperatures, coral bleaching has been recorded in 62 countries and territories since February 2023. And Park's Dr. Tan added that from May onwards, bleached or stressed and diseased corals are expected to be seen in many areas within the Indo-West Pacific and Indian Ocean. And Park's and the National University of Singapore NUS started monitoring various reef sites in early May and will continue to do so until the NOAA declares that the mass bleaching event is over. NPARCS has also been monitoring the NOAA's Coral Reef Watch page, as well as data from the U.S. body's virtual station for the Singapore Strait. The statutory board has also reached out to marine enthusiasts who survey intertidal reefs and dive operators to submit reports on the Bleaching Watch Singapore Facebook page to consolidate local observations. Said Dr. Tan, such data will help to provide a comprehensive understanding of the situation in Singapore and guide our response plans accordingly. Despite the slight decline in reef health, the marine community was relieved to see that the corals did not miss their annual spawning event, the mass release of eggs and sperm into the waters, in end April.
The synchronous reproduction is influenced by environmental cues, such as the lunar cycle and full moon. One mass spawning event happened on the night of April 29th at Pulo Satamu, where Raffles Lighthouse is located. Once released, the eggs and sperm join in the water and can grow into new coral once they settle on a hard surface, such as a rock. In 2017, a year after mass bleaching hit Singapore, the intensity of coral spawning was drastically reduced. Back then, up to 66% of corals in intertidal areas and nearly 60% of corals in subtidal areas and shallow waters had bleached. Noted a 2020 paper published in Scientific Journal Marine Pollution Bulletin. Since then, much of the reefs have bounced back, only 10% died. But it can take up to 15 years for full recovery. And being exposed to more marine heat waves, fueled by climate change, would strain the reefs further. Research to address the impact of climate change on local marine ecosystems is crucial for mitigation. Said N. Parks Under its Marine Climate Change Science Research Program, an NUS study is looking to develop climate-resilient corals with the help of microbes that naturally live on the reef builders. The research findings of such projects could guide measures such as future coral reef restoration to ensure their success. Over the next 10 years, starting in 2024, 100,000 corals will be progressively planted and grown in Singapore's waters to beef up its reef cover.